First thing I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna worry about the six at first. It's just gonna kinda of come for the ride. If I can figure out what log base eta four is, I can then multiply it by the six. Yeah? So I'm gonna kinda of focus on this business. So I'm gonna kinda of do this on this side. So at the moment, Denny, you have no idea what this shit this is, right? It's okay. I mean, it's fine. I don't want to say that like it's bad. It's fine. There's stuff we don't know what it is. So of course in algebra, if I don't know what something is, I call it x. So then eight to the x equals four. So I'm going to give it two different ways. We've done this once before, but I didn't spend a lot of time on it because solving equations with logs and exponentials was coming up. But this does help us figure out this kind of problem. I'll give you another way to look at this in a minute. You got everybody with me, what I've done so far? You might not know why I did it, but you'll see why I did it here in a minute. But this, everything I've done makes sense. The log base eta force is the part I don't understand. The six, I'm cool with six. I've known six forever. I like six, six is great. Log base eta four, blah, so I'm gonna focus on him for a minute. I don't know what the shit that is, so I call it x. So then I can rewrite it in a form I'm more familiar with. I still don't know what the answer is, because what do you raise eight to to get four? Some of you guys might know, hold on to that. Because every step I made, while you might not know why I did it, can you see the logic behind every step I did? I brought that over, I said equal to x because I don't know what it is, and then I can rewrite it in exponential form. Are eight and four both based on the same base, the same number? Four is two twos, correct? So it's based on two. Eight is how many twos? Three, so they're both based on two. So do you all agree with me that eight is two cubed? Four is two squared? And this would be 3x, yes? What must be true about these things in order for that equation? 2 to this equals 2 to that. The only way that equation can be true is if this equals that. Do you guys see that? If I say 2 to this power is equal to 2 to that power, I'm like, those can't be different powers, or else they wouldn't be equal, correct? So 3x equals 2. So what's x? 2 thirds. 2 thirds. And what was x to begin with? This thing. Yeah. So wherever I see this thing, I can replace it with 2 thirds. Now here's another way to look at this. Log base eta 4. The number inside is smaller than the base, correct? So I've got to kind of do a root to 8. If I break up into three parts, if I break 8 up into three parts, what do I get? 2, 2, 2, yes? And how many of those parts do I need to make 4? So let me see if you guys can really get this on your own. How many total twos was eight made of? Three. And out of those three, how many did it need to make four? Two. Two out of three. Two out of freaking three. Holy shit. So then I get six times two out of three, and then you can solve that. Do you remember which problem that was? Was that in the homework, or was that just? Yeah, it was number 45, 6.3. 45, 6.3. So you got that answer if you've been paying attention. And I got the answer, but I did it a way that we're, we weren't supposed to know yet. Oh, Nita. No, I took the natural log of both sides. Oh, I see. I'm with you. <clears throat> and I got yeah. natural log of 4 divided by natural log of 8, which gives you... Oh, you did like the change of base. Uh, yeah, because I just... I don't know my head wasn't seeing. Now that oh, you're just showing me... Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. Oh, sure, yes, yeah, that'll work eventually, oh my god, that'll work eventually. So, okay, I could, so we're done here, you, whatever that is, you're done, yes, you're done. I like your idea, see the six can come back up, yes, that's undoing that property of logarithms. <laughs> which is funny. Uh, undoing the property of logarithms that a power on the inside can come down, just going to put it back up. Um, now I understand why some of you guys might look at this and go, why the hell would I want to do that? So why the hell would you want to do that? This will work, but...
So how do you know that? How do you know that? It's just a fact you know? Okay, that's neat. I want from you a few facts like that that you just know. So if you happen to know that 4 to the 6 equals 8 to the 4th, that's good to know in this situation. But I, I doubt that you have that memorized. You know what I mean? So I'm really curious where that would have come from. Okay. Let me show you something kind of cool, though. You, you guys, okay, again, even if you would never do this, because do you see how it made it look like it's worse? Do you understand I could do this, yes? Because that's just a property of logarithms. So let me show you the right way, not the right way, but a kind of a slightly better way to go forward. Um, do you all agree that 4 to the 6th? Let me see if you guys are really, I'm, Everything I'm doing right now is on the side. We already finished the problem, correct? This is all just me going, look at math, it's neat. Do you all agree with me that 4 to the 6th is 4 cubed squared? Is that cool? Because what would you do with the powers? You would multiply them. Get, okay, and what is 4 cubed? What is 4 times 4 times 4? 64. 64. And can't you take the 2 down? And what is log base 8 is 64. Two. two! Two times two is four. Which is the same thing you get way up here. Three goes into six twice times two is four. You get four either way. So I thought you were going to go that way. Yes. That relies on less knowing weird little trivial facts. Yeah, okay. And again, do you have to do it either of these ways? No, this is, this is a perfectly valid way to do it. What if you have a problem where you couldn't? Ah, if the bases aren't bases. the same, yeah. then they're not going to give you the problem yet because that oh, okay. requires kind of like what you did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you can write the numbers based on the same base, then you shouldn't need a calculator. You should be able to just get the answer by thinking about it. Yeah. Now, obviously, I prefer the cut that in thirds and take two of them so the answer is two thirds. But that might not make immediate like sense to everybody. I don't know. So just do one more like that real quick, just to make sure you guys get the idea of what you can do, the most basic way to do this. If I see log base 27 and 9, do those numbers have the same base that they're based on? What are they based on? 3. So I could say, I don't know what the answer is, and then how do I rewrite this? And 27 is 3 to the third power, and nine is three to the two. second power. These have to equal, you get two thirds again. Because one third of 27, power, the power of one third of 27 multiplicatively is three, and two of those make nine, so two thirds. I still get, it's still the same number. The answer is not always two thirds, by the way. I just made two problems, I have the same number. Okay. If you don't know, it's two thirds, but no, it's not true. Anything else from homework or quiz? That's what Denny was just saying. So they wouldn't give that to us yet because it requires us to know a little more. Yeah. Yeah, the change of base we can't even talk about until we talk about solving equations. Yeah, that's coming. It's a good thing to know, though. I don't know why I remembered it. It just said, I think I can do this. <laughs> but I couldn't explain why. I just... I got you. No, I know. I understand. Trust me. <laughs> So the first thing to go is why things work. And the first thing I looked at the problem and I said, I think the answer is four, but I don't know why. Neither. That's weird. I, I saw the answer, but couldn't explain yeah, why. Yeah, from a teacher perspective, that's the worst situation. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was when a student's like, this is the answer why. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah. shit. All right. Anything else? Quiz? Homework? Anything? So what I want to do tomorrow, well, let's see. Let me ask you guys. I'm going to make this a little democratic. Why not? No, do I want to? No, I, I'm not going to make it democratic. You know, this is a autocracy. It's too bad for you. Um, tomorrow we're going to have another quiz. Because you have a quiz happy teacher. What's wrong with this guy? Tomorrow's quiz is going to be, I, I just want tomorrow's quiz to be on the basics of logs. So I'm going to ask you questions like, 
uh, log, log base 8 is 64. I'll ask you questions like uh, log base 7 of 1, right? You guys got with me those kind of questions? I, I, I am, so I will include um, not the properties because we haven't talked about all of them yet, Jeff. So I won't include the properties, it makes sense. It's too bad for me. So tomorrow, maybe like a six question quiz, just logarithm problems, yeah? Okay. Oh, did I do something? I did. I just used a property we don't know yet, I just realized on this method here. Damn it, seemed, I do it too, Denny. So tomorrow, how do you spell tomorrow? Quiz on log basics. So like that would be section uh, six three, just to be specific. For all of you section knowledge lovers, let's see. Yeah, uh, six three. I'm going to talk a little bit about the graphs of log functions today. We'll finish up a worksheet that I gave out before, and then we'll head out. So that's going to be a good day. So tomorrow's quiz basically is on 6 3. Uh, so let me do this. I'm going to talk about the graphs of logarithmic functions. Does anyone remember what a log looks like? Yeah, what's an exponential look like? What's the basic shape? Holy shit, to have basic shape of an exponential. Hold on, I'm sorry. I see you guys. All right, go, do it again. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, one major thing you have to come out of precalculus with is knowing the form of the graphs of basic functions. You all know absolute value. You all know x squared. You all know x cubed. Uh, you all know square root of x, you all know x, Ooh. and now you know a to the x looks like, yo, right, it's got a little asymptote down here, god, arrow, work with me, and this thing just goes crazy, okay. swoosh, that could have been Nike's little symbol there, right, okay, definitely not a commercial for Nike kids. Um, so what does a logarithm look like then? So the very first thing we did with logs was we graphed them before we even knew what they were. Right? Because how does a logarithm relate to an exponential? Inverses. And how do inverses relate to each other graphically? Yes, which is x and y. So what does it mean graphically? Where's the mirror? Yes. So therefore, a logarithm looks like this. So there's, see how there's an asymptote here? Oh, get out of there. What are you? Go away. You're bugging me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> what was I about to do? Oh, yeah. See how there's an asymptote here? Yes, on the x-axis. And what do inverses do? They switch the... So, of course, now there's going to be an asymptote on the y-axis. That only makes sense, yes? We know inverses switches x and y. So if there's an asymptote on the x-axis for one, there's an asymptote on the y-axis for the inverse. That only makes sense. So that looks like that flipped around y plus x. Logarithms are one of the slowest growing dudes. It is eternally growing, but it's growing so slowly. But if you look at how fast it dives back here, holy shit, it makes up for it. It goes to negative infinity, stupid, fast as shit. And then it goes, oh, get to infinity. Okay. This, if it hasn't been shifted, will always be 1. Because remind me, what is log of any good base of 1? What do I raise something to to make it become 1? 0 power. So that's why there's a 1, 0. 1 input, 0 output. It goes through 1, 0 unless I move it around, correct? So if you're paying attention, you're going to have to transform logarithmic graphs. Move it left, right, move it up and down, squishy, all this kind of shit. Yes, okay. You guys kind of with me? So every function we learn, we're going to move it around. You can say, why do we do that? Well, because I need to do something with you guys. No, but because 
that's what happens in real life. We have to kind of know, if I see this, how does it relate to the base function so I can create an equation for it? Okay. So let's try a specific example. Uh, log base 2 of x. So I know it's going to go through 1, 0. Because I haven't moved this around at all. So I know I can plot that. Where's there an asymptote? I don't know, Jeff. It's been like a minute. Where's there an asymptote? For every log. No, no, no. You're overthinking this. Have I moved that up or down? Have I moved it left or right? Isn't that just log base A of X? So have I moved it anywhere? No. So where's the asymptote? X equals zero. So Y axis, yeah. Now very quickly, um, just so we have some uh, numbers to plug in, uh, my, whenever I do shifting problems, I want to have three points that I can move around. So what, what if I put a two in? Let's do it that way first. If I put a 2 in, what's log base 2 of 2? <clears throat> 1, because you think to yourself, what power makes 2 become 2? Well, freaking first power. So with that in mind, what is log base 2 of 1 half? What do you do to 2 to make it become 1 half? Raise it to the negative 1 power. And I can see that it is approaching the asymptote, and it is growing very slowly. He's had a rough day, though. Why are you so... Okay, I don't know what to do. <laughs> this iPad's so advanced, it's mimicking like a pebbly surface underneath my paper. Oh, that turned off. Now, what if I do this? Uh, what do you guys think will happen here? Yeah, the shifts will be left. One, down, one, yes? So let me just change my color. So I'll take this point. This is where I gotta figure out how to do that. I can't change. I'll take two, one, I'll move it left one, down one. So now two, one goes there. I would take one, zero, move it left one, down one. So now that's there. And I would take one half negative one and I would move it left one, down one, where'd it go? Left one, down one, so it would be right there. Where would the asymptote be now? It's an up and down asymptote. So I don't, it doesn't care if I move it up or down. If I have an infinite stick and I move it up a little bit, it didn't do shit. But if I move it over, okay, that's totally different, right? So where will the asymptote be now? Negative one. There you go. So now I look like that. All of the interpretation of the transformations is the same. Transformations do not give the first shit what the function is. If I see a plus one in with the x, whatever the function is, is going left one. Has no say in the matter. Okay. So we've all talked about transformations. The really cool thing about them is they're always the same. You just have to know the basic shape. Let me stop for a minute. So let me ask you this. If it was log base 3 of, I don't really care, x plus 7 minus 14. Let's put a, a 22 out here just to freak you guys out. What would be my base function? Take all the transformations. How many transformations are there? Three. No? Three. Three. What are they? In the order I would do them in. Seven. Left seven. Stretch, Stretch 22. 22. Down, down 14. I love it. I'm not going to do that shit because that's not the point of this problem. The base function would be take all those away. What are you left with? Let me through that. And what would your points be that are you going to move around? What do you always have on your base function? 
Does anyone remember? An unshifted log always has one zero. How far up here do I have to go to until I get to a good number? What's a good number to put in on the x-axis? What's a good input? Is two a good input? Do you know log base three of two? No. So what's a good input? Three. Okay, three goes to, just gave it away, but yeah. So it's always base one, one zero. And then what's a good number in between these two here? It's base three, right? So what's three to the negative one? So one third, negative one. So that would be the base function. And then you move that stuff around, yes? Basically, when you're doing transformations, you want three points. You only need three points because you're supposed to already know the shape. Three anchor points to move, and then you lay the shape down on top of it, right? So I would do the three things you told me. I would do that to each of those three points, right? And then I come up to Jeff, and I kick him for giving me these weird-ass numbers. So I won't do that because I value my legs. How are you guys doing? We know the shape of the log function and the transformations work exactly the way we've done before. So really not that much new there. Okay. So what I want to focus on today, I want to remind you what we did last time. We got two properties under our belt for logarithms. What is the log base, who cares, of MW, for example? Does anyone remember? When I multiply things with the same base, what do I do with the powers? Add them. That, that's all I have to remember to remember this property. When I multiply two things with the same base, I add the powers. Log base B of M is the power that is on B to make M. Log base B of W is the power that's on B to make W. When I multiply those together, I add those two powers. So the log of the product is the sum of the logs. Very freaky rule, yes? Nowhere in there did I say that multiplication equals addition. You paid attention. It's just the rule of logs. The log of the product is the sum of the logs. Nowhere in there did I say that m times w equals m plus w. I didn't say that anywhere, yes? I could not say that anywhere because that's not true. So what about log base b of m divided by w? Yeah, log base b of m minus log base b of w. So let's do what is arguably the most important, even though it couldn't exist without the first one. So that's why we do the first one first. This is the one we're gonna use the most. It's the one that I used earlier and then I remembered I hadn't told you about it yet. So way to go, Jeff. Here's the third and probably the most important property. Uh, so let me ask you this. What if I had log base B of uh, A to the P? So I already said this earlier. Some of you guys might remember this, but I wanna show you why it's true. What does A to the P mean? What's A squared mean? Two A's multiplying. So what's A to the P mean? P A's multiplying. A times A times J, A, Jeff, what is that? And there's P of them. P of them. <laughs> Let me stop for a minute. When I have the log of a product, what did we just say I can rewrite that as? Log base B of A times A, I can rewrite that as log base B of, come on, what's log base B of M times W? It's log base B of M plus log base B of W. So let's see, let's start it off. Log base B of A times A times A times A is log base B of A plus log base B of M times W is log base B of M plus log base B of W. So what's log base b of m squared? It's log base b of m times m 
which would be log base b of m plus log base b of m. So what if I had n cubed? Wouldn't I just have one more of these dumb things? Okay, so log base b of a times a times a is log base b of a plus log base b of a plus how many times? P times. P times. So what's a better way to write like something plus something plus something plus something P times. I, would I could just write it as P times that dumb thing. That's what multiplication means. Multiplication is repeated addition. 2 times 3 means 3 plus 3. So this is, becomes the plog. <laughs> I was thinking about pleather or something. The plog. What effectively happens is the power just comes down. Now how does that relate to the properties of powers? What do I do? When I raise something with a power to a power, what do I do with the powers? When I raise something with a power to a power, like x squared to the third power, what do I do with the powers? We did it earlier. Multiply them. Isn't this a power? Do you guys agree with me that's a power? Isn't this a power? Because that's what logs are. So aren't I multiplying the powers because I was raising something with a power to a power? That's still a property of powers. I love you guys. And see the look in your eyes like, oh my god. I desperately want you to see every single property of logs is a property of powers because that's all they are. So how does this help me, Jeff, dear God? What the ever-loving shit. So let me, let me give you a very direct way this helps us. And then I can come back and do some uh, just general using the properties. Kind of problems. And you're all like, do whatever you're going to do, man. Um, let's start off with something nice. I just want to see, show you. Uh, this is good. We're going to get a little ahead, and I apparently don't care. Um, what if I had log base uh, 7 of x equals... Uh, uh, you could do it, Jeff. 1.7. I like it. Can you guys solve that for me? And you're like, I don't know, man. Can you, and here's the trick. What does it mean to solve an equation again? This is a really dumb question. What's it mean to solve an equation? And what do I, what's it mean? How do I know I'm done? When I get x equals number, yes? Or whatever the variable is, when I get variable equals number, I know I'm done. So instead of thinking of this like, I want to do something, is there a process logarithms allow me to do where I can get x by itself? How do I rewrite this logarithm as an exponent? 7 to the 1.7, and I'm done. I just throw them in my calc there. You guys see that? Now, I haven't used the property yet. I just used the basic definition of logarithms, yes? So let me show you where the property shit comes in. This is level 1. Whatever 7 to the 1.7 is, you're going to take a guess, Jeff? You never do good with this, man. I would guess it's about uh, 39.28. <laughs> like I know, I have no idea. Nobody's going to tell me. Okay, this one. Um, did somebody do it? I love you guys. You're all like, let him stew. Let him cook. What is it? Damn it. Oh, well. I'm always bad. I can never estimate how much is changing. Oh, well. This is why we have calculators, kids. Um, what about this problem instead? What if I had log base 2 of x? Let me see if I can make one that works. Do you want one that works? I think that'd probably be a good idea. Plus log base 2 of... Um, uh, you can do it, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Give me a second. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. x plus 4 equals... Give me a second. I forgot what it was. Okay. Five. Okay. Do it alive, kids. What is the fundamental difference between this problem and problem number one? It's two logs. I love it. It's perfectly said. The number of logs is too damn high. If I just had, if this wasn't there, if this stupid thing wasn't there, couldn't I just say two, I'm sorry, whoever's in the other room. Two to the fifth equals x plus four, right? The same way we just did that one, you guys with me? That stupid thing's in the way. 
do I have a property yeah. about one log plus another log, same base? When I have a log, x plus log, x plus four, one of my, they have the same base, what am I allowed to do with them? Uh, how I can rewrite this? I have log plus log, I can rewrite it as log of the product, yes? Be jealous, math goes both ways. So log base two of, right, when I add the powers, that must mean I was multiplying this stuff. That's all you gotta remember. When do you add powers? When you multiply. Okay, I'm adding powers, correct? Because logs are powers. So it must mean I was multiplying. Do I now have a single log equals five? Just like I had a single log equals 1.7 over there, yes? So how can I rewrite this? Log base two of stuff equals five. How can I rewrite that? Two to the fifth power. Solve that, I'll wait. Go ahead. Solve that. Just to help you out a little bit. You're gonna to have to multiply, subtract, factor, blah, blah, blah. Don't I have an x squared in there? Don't I need it to equal zero then? Yes? Okay. Am I gonna see these kind of problems? Yes, you are. Wasn't that in a section before? I don't care. It can come back anytime it wants to. So what's 2 to the 5th power? 32. 32. And if I multiply that out on the other side, I get x squared plus 4x, right? I got a higher power than 1, so I want to get my equation equal to 0. So I subtract that over. That looks kind of promising. I'm really hoping I don't have to use quadratic formula, but if you do, who cares? Not that big of a deal. Can you factor that thing? Yeah, x plus 8, x minus 4. So therefore, x is... Now, remember when we solved radical equations? Square root equations? What's the domain of a square root? If I want to stay real. What's the smallest number I can square root and stay real? Zero. Zero. It's from zero to infinity, right? Do you remember how you had to check your answer because you might get something that's extraneous that doesn't work? Logarithms are very similar to radicals. They also have a domain zero to infinity. They just can't even handle zero. So there's an asymptote there. Which one of these numbers do you think might pose a problem? Yeah, if you try to plug a negative eight into this guy, is he going to be all right, this guy right there? Is he going to be okay with that? Because remind me, the more you know the shape of a function, you know, the more you know everything about the given function. Doesn't the log go like this? What, what am I doing right here? I'm getting close to. What side do I not exist on at all then? So if I try to input a negative, no. Freaks the hell out. So that is not an input. Does four freak it out? No, in fact, that's how I made the equation is I picked four. So then I could set the equation up. And I was thinking in my head, yeah, anyway. So four is the answer. So just like with radicals, you could get extraneous solutions when you're solving the law of equations because they have a restricted domain. Okay, so what I want you guys to do, does anyone need this handout here? How many do I have? One, two. Everybody got that handout? Give this out a couple days ago, maybe I care. Yeah, I think it was 
two days ago, I gave that up. The other side had this business on it, right? Blah, 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 blah. We did all this, blah, 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 blah. Everybody found that? Okay, good. These are just practicing the properties, yes? Catch up to you guys a little bit. Um, so this first guy, I've got a multiplying two things. So when I multiply, what do I do with the powers? Add them. So that means if I want to break this up, there's one power, and I add it to the other power. Now log base three of three is because the power need three needs to become three is one. Log base three of x is I don't have a freaking clue. Um, this guy's just going the other way. So I'm adding two powers with the same, that have the same base. That means I can rewrite it as three times four, log base 12 of 12, which remarkably in every year. So I'm adding logs. That means I can make the log of the product when I'm Multiplying inside of a log, I can rewrite it as a sum of logs. Now, real quick, I, I want to say this. I cannot do shit to this. I cannot do shit to this. I cannot do shit to those. So, there's no property for what if I'm adding inside of a log. There's no property for that. This is not, dear God, this is not distribution. Because that is not log base 3 times a plus b. That doesn't make any sense. That's like me saying this is the square root of uh, the square root times 2 plus 4 or something. That's not what that is. Just because it looks like 12, Jeff. That's too bad. So it's a symbol. It's a function symbol. It's, a plus B is inside of the logarithm. It can't distribute. Yes? There are no properties for these two. Poor little dudes. So maybe, maybe. This is the idea of logic. It works one way but not the other. So if I add two logs, it becomes a single log of the product. If I have a log of a sum, it goes nowhere. It does not. Okay. So this guy. How can I rewrite this guy? Do they have the same base? Yes. Yeah, so I have two powers adding with the same base. That must mean they came from I was multiplying. You might have guessed, you could pretty much say, I think the answer is probably one. Yeah, you might be right. Well, don't get used to that. There's not always going to be one, but. Let me stop for a minute. It's, it's I, I need to understand, there's nothing more to it than that. It's crazy. It feels weird. We've never seen a function that does this because logarithms are weird as hell. They're the opposite function from an exponential. They, they, they should be weird. So I'm going to rewrite this thing, first step. Yeah, log base 3 of 3. Minus log base 3 of 5. I'm dividing two things in a log, so I, that must be in subtracting the logs, subtracting the powers. Was log base 3 3? No. Still 1. Log base 3 5? Who knows? 1 point something. I'm not going to guess because I always get it wrong. Logarithms are weird. It's really hard to kind of estimate them. I could sit down and come up with something, but I don't want to. Um, now I'm going to go the other way. So I have the difference of two powers. So what must I have been doing to the things? 
I must have been dividing. I'm going to do this one in two different ways, just because. And what is 75 divided by 3? 25. Yeah, 75 cents is 3 quarters. So that's log base 5 of 25. And what's the log base 5 of 25? Good, because you ask yourself, what power does 5 need to become 25? That's the question the logarithmic symbol represents. So math is really just shorthand for a bunch of long-ass questions. You just have to remember what the questions are. Sure. Let me do this a different way. Let me do it using rule number one up here. Can you break 75 up? You break it up a certain way. Isn't 75 uh, 25 times 3? Right? Oh shit, you guys can tell me. I'm sorry. I can break up 75 as 25 times 3. Is that, is that cool? By the way, I'm done with this problem, yes? So here's Jeff doing his weird shit again. Um, can't I break this up into log base 5 of 25 plus log base 5 of 3? Don't these cancel then? Didn't I get log base 5 of 25 a different way that way? So all the properties must be self-consistent. If I see another way to do a problem with a different property, it's got to have the same answer. If it didn't, we'd throw it out, we'd all go home, we'd all be living in caves, but that's okay. We'd all be happy? I don't know. This one, there's two different ways to do this, to be honest. But if I use this property, how do I rewrite this? What's the base, by the way? Ten. Ten. So if I use this property, how do I rewrite this? Log. 1 minus log 10. And what's log of anything of 1? Log base of anything is 0. And what's log of 10? 1. So I get negative 1. Does anyone see a more direct way to do that? Doesn't this log say, what do I raise 10 to to get 1 tenth? And don't I raise it to a negative 1 power to get 1 tenth? It's kind of nice to see the same number answer with two different ways to look at it. So if I just gave you this problem, does it matter which way you do it? Nope. Well, between the ways I showed you. Just plug in your calculator. It's not good. And finally we get the plug, the plug uh, rule. Why not? Is your math plugged up? First one here, very simple. The only damn thing I can do related to this thing is to what? Take the two down. Two, I can take it down. Two log three, A. What's wrong with this guy? There's something kind of wrong with him. Have I ranted much about the radicals yet? Okay, so you're all like, we get it, Jeff. Radical notation sucks so bad. So many problems, the first step is, you see any radicals? Rewrite the shit. How can I rewrite the uh, square root of x? X to the one half. And then it becomes easy, yes? Stupid radical notation. One half log base five of x. What about c? What do you guys think? Here's Jeff, he hates those radicals, but do I have to rewrite that radical here? Because isn't the radical the power? So what's the property for logarithms? Whatever's in the power of the thing on the inside can just come down. So that just comes down. Square root of r, log base w, e. I can leave it alone because the whole damn thing is just coming down. This one I had to rewrite because I gotta know what the power is so I can bring it down. This one, the radical is the power. It's just going to come down. Okay, maybe. Bring the power down, kids. Write the powers up here. Okay. Sorry. Or don't. You don't have to. It's a lot. It takes a lot. Uh, let's see. Oh. Um, this here... Can you guys, yeah, remember this one? Does anybody need this one? I gave this one out last time, yesterday, is what that means. And we worked on all this. Remember all this? We did all this yesterday. It's crazy.
How many of you need a sheet of that too? So we got that, okay. Look at the first problem here. So it kind of makes sense. A lot of mathematics, we want to combine stuff, right? So doing this this way sort of makes sense. I want to bring all that stuff back together. So let me ask you this. Do, we have a, uh, do I have a property for twice log 3 something plus log 3 something? Do I have a property for twice the log plus another log? No. I have a property for log plus log, correct? Do you guys see how that 2 is in the way then? Stupid 2. Well, what can we do with it first thing? What can I do with a number out front? Where did it come from? I could put it put back where it came from. I could put it back up in the exponent, right? So every property goes both ways. So we're going to do there. I can just bring it back up. I really want you guys to see this. Every property we had was log plus log, log minus log, log of something to a power. None of them said two log plus something. Stupid two's in the way. So the very first thing I can do Bring that two back up. Get out of there. What else can I do that to? One half. Stupid one half. Get on up. Okay. So let me rewrite that. I've got log base three y squared plus log base three a minus log base three w to the one half. Now let me see if you guys are cool with this. What does adding two logs mean? I write the log of the when I add two logs, it becomes a log of the product, yes? Because when do I add powers? When those multiply. What happens when I subtract two logs? It becomes a log of the quotient, yes? So let me see if you guys are cool with this shortcut. Everything that's positive ends up on the top. Everything that's negative ends up on the bottom. Because when I add logs, I multiply, multiply. When I subtract logs, I divide. So let me do this two ways. Uh, I'll do it step by step. Just look at those two. What's the rule? Multiply. So it'll be log, the single log of y squared a. Yes? I don't know why I wrote it like that. Yeah, I do, but it's okay, Jeff. You'll be all right. You don't have to write it weird like that. I'm sorry. Maybe some of you guys see why I did that, folks, because I'm thinking ahead. What am I going to do now? What's the log of stuff minus the log of other stuff? I could have just gotten there straight from the beginning because I say y squared is a positive log that's up top, a is a positive log that's up top, w is a negative log so it's on the bottom. Bam, bam, bam. Because I know minus means I'm going to divide by it, plus means I'm going to multiply by it, so I know where they're going to end up. So you can do it step by step, or you can just go boom. It's up to you. And then, um, just looking ahead a little bit, we already did a problem like this, remember? This one's a little different, though. This one's like the one we did earlier. Why is this one different? Well, how am I going to have to rewrite this one? Let's see, how do I rewrite that? Log base 4 of what? You can do it. Yes, don't I have log minus log? So when I subtract logs, that must have come from when they were... Dividing, now do I have a single log equals number? That automatically means I can rewrite it in exponential form. How would I do that? And then how do you do this? How do you solve this thing? What sucks about this? It's a fraction. Stupid fraction. All right, it's in an equation. I can kill fractions when they're in equations. They're in my domain. How do I kill the fraction? What would I multiply by? I'd multiply by x minus 12. That's the reason there's a fraction. There's a stupid x minus 12. So if I multiply by x minus 12, I get 4x minus 48 equals chop x. 
If I do this, I'll eventually get x equals 16. You guys will get there. Is 16 okay? Does that freak anybody out? I mean, not you guys, but I mean in the equation. Does 16 freak anybody out? Do I end up with a negative input if I put a 16 in? Both inputs are, if I put a 16 in, this is positive 16, and this input is positive 14. So nobody freaks out. I don't get zero, and I don't get a negative, right? I cannot put a zero or a negative into a log. Same way we can't put a negative into a square root. I don't know if any of you guys are thinking about this, but some of you guys might be realizing square roots of negative numbers lead to complex numbers, yes? What about logs of negative numbers? They also lead to complex, but we're not gonna talk about that <laughs> in this class. Just in case anybody starts to think that way, yes. And you can look that shit up if you want to. It's a neat shit. Um, that's enough for today, guys. We'll finish this up tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow we got the like six question question uh, quiz about logs, just basic logs, uh, and then we'll finish up. I'm also going to give you the practice test tomorrow because believe it or not, when's our next test? Tuesday. Tuesday. Holy shit, we got a quiz tomorrow. Test next Tuesday. <laughs> Sounds about right for a six unit course. Yes. What's the uh, quiz chapter? Oh, I'm sorry. It, it's six three. If I remember correctly, the the log, the basic log one. The, I'm just going to ask you questions like log base four of sixteen. I might give you one like log base eight of two. So you got to remember that the answer could be a fraction. Yes. For the first question, would we have to worry about rationalizing the log of fraction? So oh, this guy. Yeah, we normally don't worry about that when it's inside. Yeah, there's no real good point to do that. Yeah, but I see why you're thinking that. Yeah.